Hey guys, weekend energy update. Let's get into it. We, of course, are in a very tense, hypercharged, energetic atmosphere right now, just a couple of days out from a once in two year alignment that is happening between Mars and Uranus in the sign of Taurus. We've been talking and talking and talking all about this for a while now. So everybody knows that it's pending out there, but this is a time of unexpected events, sudden change, and you could definitely be picking up on something coming over the course of the next several days. So we've got that. Now, the other dimension of the energy, which is quite interesting, considering we do have this pending Mars-Uranus conjunction, indicating some type of sudden change in the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, we have a very prominent Venetian influence going on this weekend, but it's actually like in regards to kind of like the darker side of the feminine energy. You'll be feeling very triggered by other people throughout the course of this weekend. The moon will be transiting the sign of Libra, activating the black moon who recently entered the sign of Libra for a new nine month transit. We are on a nine month journey through the underworld in the context of relationship dynamics, you guys. And a lot of that is going to be sort of like bubbling to the surface as we enter the weekend. So we're going to talk about that today and it'll be interesting to see how the Venetian issues that come up throughout the course of the weekend play into the Mars Uranus activation, unexpected events, sudden change in another Venetian sign that is happening on Monday. So very interesting times energetically, you guys. We've got a lot of astrology to talk about. Let's get into our report of the weekend. Let's see how all of this is coming together, everything we've got going on, and how it might be impacting our experience as we move towards Monday and uh, the alignment between Mars and Uranus. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Friday, July 12th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the weekend where we are narrating the shift of the ages. In this video, we are talking about the energy that we have lining up for us this weekend as we do prepare to go through this activation of Mars and Uranus that is coming up on Monday that everybody in the astrological community has been talking about for a few weeks now. We're really building strongly into that energy. Very, very active right now. And as I said in my intro, you know, you're probably feeling tension or anticipation or anxiety. This is really like wiring our spidey senses. I talked about that a little bit in the last video, just picking up on something. So if that is how you're feeling, it is a sign of the times. It's just like right in alignment with the way energy is coming together right now. And there are probably some things that are about to happen because that's what happens when we have Mars and Uranus come together. Mars is a very action oriented planet. Mars is things happening and Uranus is sudden change, the galactic fixer, the great rectifier brings what usually appears to be some type of like chaos or calamity, but ends up being like exactly the thing that needed to happen so that everything could get better somehow. So blessings in disguise when we're dealing with Uranus. With Mars there though, this is combustion. This is dynamism. This is very explosive. This is very electrifying in you know along those lines be careful with like literally like literal electric stuff going on there could also be this alignment's happening in the sign of Taurus so there could be like which is an earth sign so there could be like big earth stuff going on like there could be like fires that happen unexpectedly there could be like electrical storms or lightning storms or like power outages and stuff that like affect wide areas there could be like earthquake type of things um unexpected like sudden weather events could go on over the course of the next week, you know, really between now and like the next week when we have these two energies coming together. But I do feel like the primary focus, as I said, energetically this weekend is relationships and they could be a bit of a sore spot. Feeling triggered by other people is a primary vibe that we have going on. The black moon just began a new nine month transit, this time through the sign of Libra. The black moon, this is our fears, our insecurities, our worries, our doubts, our shadow side issues, the unhealed trauma that we harbor within that is related to faulty subconscious programming that keeps us in these like perpetual karmic loops of attracting that which is a reflection of what is unhealed within us until we can gain an awareness of what that is, go through the process of healing it, integrating the shadow, and then we can be released from that experience, from that cycle or pattern of behavior in order to, you know, go and grow and evolve on something new and different. But when when we're dealing with black moon transiting the sign of Libra 
ultimately what that is going to boil down to is like a primary fear of like not being accepted being cast out being like imperfect being like unlovable uh fear of like ultimately being alone because we're talking about the sign of libra venus that is the sign of the other so when we've got a black moon transiting through the sign of libra it is going to kick up issues in regards to all of those Libra themes but primarily how we relate and connect to others and also to ourselves. The black moon works and deals in polarities so when we've got a black moon in the sign of Libra it is also activating the polarity of that sign which would be the Aries energy. So really you know whenever there's any black moon transit going on is affecting both the people who have a lot of natal energy in that particular sign like for example all of you guys with like big Libra stellium and strong Libra placement, sun, moon, Chiron, black moon, and the sign of Libra. As the black moon goes through there, you guys will be probably feeling it the most, but also Aries people with a lot of Aries energy that have their planets and their stelliums opposing the black moon are also probably going to be feeling this energy the most strongly when the moon is activating it and that is what activates it is the the black moon functions in conjunctions and in opposition so whenever we have the moon transiting the sign where either the black moon is located or again the sign opposing the black moon this is when that black moon energy is going to be sort of kicked up in a more relevant part of our experience and we are getting our first dose of that as we move through the weekend this weekend friday the moon enters the sign of Libra for the first time since the black moon entered the sign of Libra and so we are getting like uh, our preliminary dose of black moon and Libra energy and I do feel like it'll probably be highlighting the darkest sides of the Libran energy to start off this transit but as we move through the transit as we have an opportunity to gain the awareness of what has been lurking in the shadows we will go through the process of healing and release and this is actually like a supercharged karmic release period for black moon issues shadow side issues in the context of the Libra energy because the south node is also in the sign of Libra the south node is karma and it's karmic endings and it's karmic release as the south node has been transiting Libra we already know and I've already been talking about this since last summer when the black or when the nodes entered Aries and Libra we're in a time of karmic release in the context of the facades that we have maintained the images that we have defined ourselves by the friendships the relationships the social circles that we have associated ourselves with and also the things that we have been attached to in order to not have to experience you know being alone or in order to not feel cast out or to not feel rejected Libra has a lot to do with the image the facade how we present ourselves in order to be accepted by the group with the south node transiting through the sign of Libra we already know that this is a period of time when there are going to be some major relationship changes and we've got Mars and Uranus that's the other side of this coin I've been talking for like months and months and months now about how I felt like Venetian people people you know carrying strong Venus energy strong Libra strong Taurian energy you guys are actually like the epicenter of the upgrades and the change going on right now especially with the Mars Uranus conjunction that is happening in the sign of Taurus which is ruled by Venus and also the black moon south node transit of the sign of Libra Taurus and Libra people you guys are going through like major major transformations major major overhauls in the way that you essentially like use your energy feminine energy generally has um been manifesting through a distortion or an inversion in a quite collective way for a pretty long period of time and it's led to things being really out of balance in some ways that have been distorting the ability for like things to grow and be created and produce themselves like organically in alignment with like how their evolutionary path is supposed to go. When there is a distortion in a feminine, any feminine energy field, 
things cannot grow properly. They cannot grow organically. So, I mean, feminine energy, this is the seeding energy. This is the creative force. And if it is not flowing in an organic way, then whatever it is seeding is also going to have a reduced capacity to grow in alignment with its true, like authentic organic potential. And I think that that is actually one of the things on an energetic level that is responsible for a lot of the imbalance, a lot of the relationship issues, a lot of the generational trauma that we see play out in our lives, experiences, and the world around us, I think has to do and is originally stemming from some inversion of feminine energy that went on during the Pisces era that is now seeking to be rectified through Uranus's current transit through the sign of Taurus, this Venetian energy getting its dose of galactic fixing right now right at the proper time as Pluto is about to enter the sign of Aquarius as well empowering on another level the Aquarian archetypes characteristics and dynamics that are going to begin to root these new Aquarian frequencies that will define the next 20 years through the Pluto Aquarian generation and further on in, into the future the next 2000 years the age of Aquarius that is incoming now the writing okay the <laughs> inverting the inversion um rectifying the distortion of this feminine energy collective field i feel like that is really what is happening over the course of the next nine months and i think that that actually is going to have a bigger impact than we might imagine in terms of other things on a greater scale coming back into a better balance somehow moving forward uh, throughout the next year, the next five years, the next 20 years, as I said, as we move into this Aquarian dominant energy. So all that being said, uh, powerful, powerful time for uncovering or gaining an awareness of our own like deep subconscious triggers and issues in the context of how we relate to ourselves and others, our own issues having to do with self-worth, our own issues having to do with feeling accepted, and our own issues having to do with where we're willing to sell our soul in order to receive something physical, love, money, recognition, fame, things. So the, the whole concept, right, of you know, selling your soul to the devil in order to get something in return, something that generally we feel like we're missing inside of us. And the only way that we can obtain that thing is through surrendering or sacrificing a dimension of ourselves to get that externally. Okay, that is definitely going to be a theme that we're dealing with when we have black moon Libra energy. This is the dark side of everything to do with love, everything to do with connection, everything to do with relation, everything to do with money. It is going to bring up things to do with blackmail and coercion that are gaining some type of an awareness or prominence somehow. Things to do with like legal structures that have set or been put in place, like issues with like conservatorships and stuff like that. Abusive and codependent relationships are going to be a big thing. Also, addictions of all kinds will be an issue that is just like um, more publicly like trending at this point in time. Things to do with debt and being in debt and how you know we are essentially like owned through the ways that we are indebted to people materialism narcissism these issues i think are really going to be taking some type of prominence some type of center stage as we begin this black moon libra transit the dark side of love and money and also the justice system are going to gain relevance and gain awareness and they're going to be dealt with as we move through this period of time it's really beautiful that we've got the black moon south node conjunction coming in the sign of libra i mean while we also have a mars uranus conjunction in the sign of taurus i'm telling you you guys um things that have been unfair things that have been unjust things that have been like unreciprocal, out of proper balance, um, issues to do with toxic and abusive relationship dynamics, issues to do with um, any type of like trafficking or slavery or like addictions and stuff like that as well. These are the things that are going to get cleared up, especially if they're things that have been going on, you know, cyclically, like in patterns, generationally, generational curses along these lines as well. This is breaking this cycle, especially again in these like abusive relationship dynamics and stuff, toxic relationship dynamics. 
toxic relationships to ourselves, self-sabotage, self-loathing and stuff like that. Like that type of stuff could be very, very relevant and prominent as we begin this transit. But as we get to the end of the transit, we are going to find that I really do feel like our heart will have been purified in a lot of ways. Like people might go into this energy and just feel like they got a black heart going on. But by the time we get to the end of it, it like, you know, when by that, I mean, um, you know, just harboring and holding like all of these really toxic emotions in the context of relationships and other people and stuff like that. But as we go through this period of time and the events that manifest in association with it, there's going to be some type of an awakening to some type of inner worth, inner value the relationship with ourselves, like being able to let go of other people's perceptions of who we are that we've been internalizing and therefore perhaps not even seeing ourselves through the proper lens. There's going to be a re-embracing of the authentic self in a way that is, um, not as critical perhaps as maybe we used to be because others people other people's opinions just are not going to matter as much to us as they used to as we move through this period of time we are going to have to face the a lot of people are going to have to face the fear of being alone and they're going to find themselves in a situation where there's just no other way where it's either like I do it on my own or I totally sacrifice myself and like deal with that suffering to the point where I realize that I would rather do it on my own and just kind of like having to face that having to um, learn how to exist without the like input and the support or the security or the companionship or just like feeling a part of something to the same extent now this is not going to be forever you know this is a nine month transit we've got essentially nine months right now to go through the underworld in terms of like the nature of our own heart and again the most important thing here is our relationship to ourself our perception of our own worth and our own value but like the flip side of this coin that i find to be so magical and remarkable is the uranus mars conjunction happening simultaneously which is doing just that it's like it's like the chicken and the egg you know what i mean it's like what came first the mars and uranus conjunction that like created this spark of awakening where we actually recognized oh like I am more valuable than I thought I was. I can do more than I thought I could. I do have more going on than um, I had given myself credit for. Like I am more capable than I ever knew myself to be. Like, is it, is it that which is causing us to finally be able to let go of maybe like the codependent relationships or the uh, like opinions of other people that cause us to act and behave and present ourselves a certain way? Or is it the like personal change that is going on within us, like coming to a point where we are just feeling very turned off and like almost repelled by the people and the social interactions, the networks, the relationships that we've had in our lives before that is causing us to kind of isolate ourselves. And that is where we are like receiving the awakening to these valuable gems that we are discovering we've had inside the whole time, but had been just like disregarding for years or lifetimes and like sacrificing all of the beauty within us in order to like give it to other people so that we could feel loved and accepted and all of that and never having actually got what we deserved. You know, this whole thing of reciprocity the give and take the fair balance the energy exchange like that type of thing very prominent and highlighted right now as well and people are going to realize that it is no longer worth the personal sacrifices to be a part of the group to receive the external validation are no longer going to be worth the cost okay and um we're gonna have to reconcile that and people are going to have to learn to deal with it. But I will tell you, on the flip side of this transit, things are going to be a lot different. Relationships are going to be a lot more authentic. Um, the connections that do come in are going to be much more aligned on like a soul level and much more fulfilling, honestly. So if you feel like, you know, you have been in a situation for a long time now where there is just no real depth or meaning or fulfillment in the relationship areas of your life or in terms of like what you're doing to make money or if you really just feel like you're like selling your soul for a dollar or for you know a thing or for some type of attachment or relationship or whatever um 
this energy that we are moving through over the course of the next nine months is going to probably show you that it's really not worth it and you are actually able and capable of creating much better relationships actually on your own once you go through this process of maybe like isolating a little bit we're learning to be <laughs> we're learning to have a better relationship with ourselves we are cultivating a friendship with ourselves we are discovering our value and discovering our worth and when we emerge from this perhaps place of facing the fear of isolation again the new communities the new groups the new friendships the new romantic partners the new financial situations that do come into our lives are going to be supportive of our like actual true process of growth and are going to actually help us get to where we want to get to they're going to support our upgrades they're going to reflect who we could be in, you know, as we're going through this process of becoming a better version of ourselves instead of who we used to be, who we've always been and keeping us like captives to the past. The past, you guys, as I've been talking and talking and talking about is on its way out. We got to let it go. Everything that defined the nature of our reality, who we were, what we liked, um, how we behaved also like Mars and Uranus together. This is a lot of people really, really changing their behaviors, changing how they act, changing um, their habits and their routines and their lifestyles and the way they approach situations based on this discovery, perhaps, or this awakening to something that we are finding to be vital or something that we are finding to be valuable or some type of potential that we are no longer willing to sacrifice, to deny or to ignore because we're seeing the value in that instead of the value in the facade and like everybody else's opinions. It's like in the past, we may have been able to get more from like falling in line and like being the same, you know, do following all the rules and all that and like following the social cultural expectations like that may have been where the prizes and the trophies were in the past moving into this new energy you guys we are moving into a pluto and aquarius generation we are moving into an aquarian age the gold right now the trophies right now that are going to be won have everything to do with like our authentic merit and our own unique individualism and our ability to inspire that out of others okay so it's like just the rules of the game are changing what used to work in the past and that's the other side of this it's like what was trending what used to work the ways that feminine energy used to be broadcast and was used um you know as something to attain to the images that we were told and presented in this past reality as like beautiful and all of that all of the, the beauty standards and stuff like that like i do feel like that type of stuff is about to really be changed, really be altered, and we're going to start to embrace a more traditional um, idea of feminine energy moving forward, and it's going to rebalance things, it's going to reharmonize things, it's going to solve a lot of uh, root issues that have been perpetuating, that have been maintaining the matrix of the past, which is going through its transition right now into the new energy of the paradigm that is emerging, carrying us into the future. So to get back on track with things about, you know, specifically how it might be for us moving through Friday, feeling triggered by other people, things having to do with what is fair, feeling left out or like you don't fit in, powerful encounters and connections, confrontations, or even like an obsessive energy regarding other people could be going on. As I've mentioned several times, we have the moon entering Libra, conjoining the black moon, and the black moon actually right now the, and the moon will be in a trine to Pluto in the early degrees of Aquarius, but also heading towards that south node. But simultaneously, Venus ruling the position of the black moon and the moon and the south node and also Mars and Uranus in their conjunction in the sign of Taurus right now will be in an exact opposition with Pluto retrograde in Aquarius on Friday also. So this is bringing in, you know, we've got the shadows are being activated like all the ways okay we've got the moon and the black moon in the sign of libra talking about and with the south node there talking about these karmically like reoccurring issues in the context of how we're relating to ourselves and others what we value and what we're willing to sacrifice to get what we value and also venus in the opposition to pluto that has given a lot of the same vibes 
I am uh, very, very familiar with Vino or <laughs> Vino, Venus Pluto aspects. I got a really good grip on how that energy functions. And that is another energy that really puts us face to face with the darker nature of the feminine energy. It can bring up obsessive tendencies. It can bring up these powerful confrontations. It can bring up power differentials in relationships as well. And this is another, whenever Venus and Pluto are in harsh aspect together, this is always going to bring up themes of where we are sacrificing or where we are willing to surrender aspects of our own personal power, aspects of our heart, aspects of our purity, aspects of our feminine energy, our ability to properly and in a fair and balanced way give and receive in order to get something external that we feel like we don't have within and it can set up these like abusive and toxic relationship dynamics where we are giving something of ourselves and we are willing to surrender to this more powerful force in order to feel validated in order to feel accepted or in order to feel financially supported in order to feel secure and safe on like a financial material based level so that is another thing that is really like digging in to these exact same primary issues that we've got going on. It can also bring up the fear of being abandoned, the fear of being alone, because we're under the impression when we've got harsh Venus Pluto aspects that we need something outside of ourselves because we're not seeing the value and the worth within, which is what Uranus and Mars right now and the sign of Taurus are awakening us to. So we've got both sides of the story. On one side, we have where we're not enough, where we don't fit in, where we're not perfect, and the fear of losing love and those that love us and acceptance and companionship being highlighted. On the other side of things, we have energy that is really, really awakening us to exactly what we're lacking on the other side that gets us into that situation in the first place. You know what I mean? It's like we have the, we have both the snake bite but also the anti-venom going on in the exact same period of time. So it's like, yeah, you know, we might be really dealing with that bite, but we're also having an opportunity to heal ourselves from it in a way where we won't be implicated by it going forward. This is all about karmic release as well. So this is a this is a pretty like intense energy of course tension is building right now and we know that calling into question though for sure I feel like definitely this next week is probably going to have a lot to do with relationship dynamics especially again these like toxic or abusive or distorted or inverted relationship dynamics financial dynamics we're talking about the Venetian energy, you know, Mars and Uranus in the sign of Taurus this is also having to do with resources assets food, projects, material comfort, you know, wealth, money markets, economies, like big financial institutions and stuff like that. Um, and then we've got the justice system being highlighted right now as well, where love, money, and justice related themes and issues have been used to overpower, to manipulate, to deceive, to enslave somehow, to control through fear. These are the type of things that are going to start having a light shown on them as we move through this period of time. It's interesting also because with Venus right now in the sign of Leo, this could also have to do with like celebrity culture. It could have to do with like the rich and famous, like elites. There can, and we even actually have the sun at 21 degrees of Cancer on Wednesday. That Sabian symbol is a prima donna singing. So there could be some type of like, um, public scandal or something like that having to do with this type of stuff that is like prominent or happens comes out right now it is going to expose I do think a lot of lying cheating and stealing that has gone on behind the scenes it has gone on unnoticed and that people have gotten away with it could also though have to do with Venus right now in the sign of Leo it could also have to do you guys with the inner child our relationship to our own inner child very very good time for using this energy to gain and awareness of sort of like the state of maybe our inner child and what we need to do to like heal old wounds that you know happened within our heart or within our sense of self stemming from childhood that maybe have kept us attached to this faulty perception of self or unable to see the truth of our own value in some way like that is how this could work out too there could be some type of inner child healing that goes on right now that releases us from some type of an illusion of not being capable somehow that has kept us in 
toxic relationships or just situations or just even a view of ourselves and our ability to be anything more than what we've always been told that we could be. I'm telling you, other people's opinions, judgments, all that are going to become much less relevant as we move through this period of time. And honestly, you may be sitting there right now being like, oh my God, no, like I could never go against what these people think or what these people say or like my whole situation is dependent on, you know, uh, we're being a certain way so that I'm accepted by this group or whatever I'm telling you whatever happens over the course of the next nine months you are probably not going to feel the same way when we get to this end of, end of this energy check it come back and rewatch this video in nine months when the black moon leaves Libra and I bet you especially if you do have a lot of that Libra or Aries energy that you're going to be feeling a lot different about things. I mean, with the black or the south node transiting through Libra anyways, this is this is already changing preferences, like letting go of like old situations generally and it's just like it's the time to do it it's just it has to happen it's just going to be happening so I do think that we are going to be vastly reconsidering what and who we value and the personal sacrifices that we are willing to maintain that or those connections moving forward so step one in this energy is really going to be figuring out right like why and how we are willing to give ourselves away why and how we betray ourselves in order to receive something external some type of validation whatever and then step two is going to be the release of these toxic attachments images relationships facades that we're realizing are just not who we want to be anymore and it is literally not worth our time energy resources to continue to perpetuate something that is not in alignment with who we know we're becoming right now our resources <laughs> Taurus will be much better spent put into the cultivation of whatever we're trying to grow produce become as we move through this energy and Mars and Uranus together in the sign of Taurus that is also radical sudden growth so releasing karmic cycles of toxic attachments primarily to distorted feminine energy or the distorted feminine energy that we've been dealing with that has resulted maybe in some type of toxic attachments bringing a resurgence I do think of this purity and fertility and organic creative potential that is going to begin to trend a that is going or that is going to cause like things collectively to start trending away from the more darker inverted feminine energy that really has been kind of a dominant force at least culturally and in the media over the course of several several years now issues related to toxic feminine energy inverted feminine energy and narcissistic feminine energy um being released from the collective vibrational field following this transit and i do think we're going to watch the culture as a whole trend away as i said from like overly sexualized and overly masculinized feminine energy we will see um the embrace or re-embrace of culture and women in the context of this um more like natural feminine expression emphasis placed on the value and the worth associated with the creativity and the fertility and the feminine energy generally as opposed to the like more like primal sexual energy and women's ability to compete with men which has been a definite thing over you know the past couple of decades in order to get there though like I said in the beginning as we start this transit I do think that it's actually going to like bring up more of it we may be like even more inundated with these like shadow side um distorted feminine energy qualities to the point of reversal of really tipping the scales back in the other direction we're gonna like lose our taste for it you know we're not gonna be attracted to it anymore actually I think that people are going to start being more repulsed by that type of thing no, especially the more it is like given center stage the more prominent that it is culturally over this period of time which is probably how it's going to go the less of a hold it's going to be able to maintain over like the psyche of the human collective which is right in alignment with everything else right now Saturn retrograde Neptune retrograde and the sign of Pisces those are like the projections and the narratives and the trends of the past that are falling away as we prepare to go in this new direction that is emphasizing organic truth real value real worth real potential so like anywhere that there's like a false value assigned to anything 
there's going to be like, this is, I, I think that over this period of time, there's going to be reevaluations going on. And I think that can literally be applied to like millions of different expressions all over the place. Now, I think the appeal is going to be with seeking things that have true value as opposed to just an image that is being projected that we are supposed to associate value with. And again, it makes sense when we've got Mars and Uranus coming together in Venus's other sign, awakening us to authentic value and potential. So Libra season, Libra energy, Taurus energy, that these are like huge themes right now and Libra season this year once we get into the fall I feel like is going to be very very clutch crucial we're going to see a lot of activity happen during our Libra season this year as well we are in a season of relationship makeovers across the board and it's very tense energy that we've got going on out there aside from the Mars Uranus conjunction I mean we also have a quarter square moon going on as we move into Saturday the moon in Libra will square the sun in the sign of Cancer and also oppose Chiron and we also have the sun in the sign of Cancer building into a square with Chiron as well on Sunday Sunday we are like right at the precipice tension is turned all the way up we are one degree out of exact conjunction between Mars and Uranus we are one degree out of the sun's big cardinal square to Chiron in the sign of Aries the moon enters the sign of Scorpio which opposes the Mars Uranus conjunction in the sign of Taurus so everything is really really lit up on Sunday take it easy if you can proceed with caution go slow you know pay attention just a very unstable unpredictable energy out there like anything really could pop off at any moment it can be kind of like an accident prone energy we do want to slow down we do want to be prepared we do want to realize that things are probably just not going to go according to plan and try to be like as flexible and as like smoothly reacting as possible we don't want to be like hyper hyper reactive and responsive to things people are going to be just like reacting on a hair trigger reaction um do your best to stay as grounded as possible as we go through this energy. And that is my final word of advice for this video. So that's what I have to say, you guys, about how things are looking like for us as we kick off this Black Moon and Libra cycle with Venus opposite Pluto, south node there. And we head towards the Mars-Uranus conjunction taking place on Monday. I like I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of different things, but what it is going to do as I said earlier I think like the blanket theme that we can really like count on taking place is revaluation of like anywhere where things are presenting a false value or an image that is not in alignment with an authentic value somehow that is going to lose the dominant like energetic pull okay and people are really going to be seeking things that have actual authentic value going forward let's get a synchronicity card guys god spirit universe what would be a message for us to keep in mind this weekend as we head through this energy again you know it probably is going to be kicking up issues with relationships and if not you may just find yourself feeling really bothered by other people <laughs> Our synchronicity card says, you guys, count on God every time and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalms 1-3. You will prosper. You will grow and expand. The law of attraction is now working for you and you attract all those who will help you in reaching your goals spiritually and materially. And I love this because that's what I was saying. Like, I feel like this is a period of time over this nine months where we are actually being like refined to a version of ourselves that can attract our true like soulmates. You know what I mean? Like the people that we are meant to be traveling this life with who are going to help us like get to the next phase of our journey that are going to support our growth and progress as we go through this process of personal upgrade and self-actualization that universe is calling us towards over the course of the next 20 years um this is happening so that we can bring in the people and the relationships that like are our real people and that are going to be a reflection of who we're becoming and that can experience like the the sense of fulfillment that can come from like truly harmonious and balanced relationships that is what we are being prepared for and to receive and to be able to give as well give and receive a reciprocity as we move through this period of time so energetic upgrade in terms of our all of us 
the way the feminine energy is functioning within us. That's what we're dealing with. Going to bring up its own issues. Count on God. You are, what does it say? The law of attraction is now working for you and you will attract all those who will help you in reaching your goals spiritually and materially. So no fear, you guys. And if you feel yourself coming to a point where you know you got to let somebody go, you know the relationship doesn't suit you anymore. You know that this situation just doesn't fit you. You know if you keep wearing it that you are not going to be able to grow in the direction that universe is putting you, pushing you towards. Mars and Uranus together. This is a time of active change. This is a time to take action to make changes that we know we need to take or make. <laughs> and if we don't, what does Uranus do, you guys? Uranus makes his... I cannot talk right now. <laughs> Uranus makes the changes for us that we haven't been able to make for ourselves. So that's the whole story. That's what I have to say. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends if you think that they would be interested in this type of astrology content as well. Leave me comments, you guys. I am so grateful for your presence here. Thank you guys all so much. If you are having experiences that line up with what I'm talking about in these videos, please let me know in my comment section below. That is very valuable information to me. If you want to know what's on this whiteboard, I have a link in my description box to a Facebook group where I post images of these boards and come back with me on Monday, you guys. We are going to have a big video, a big energy and this big activation, the alignment between Mars and Uranus. The moment has arrived. I will be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you then, guys. Have a really beautiful weekend and until then, bye.